ups and downs at 7.30 on a frosty Sunday. In the background, the grandstand shine in the morning sun, but the horses we are here to see are iron ones, and some less than 46 years old. For today is the silver bee of the Sunbeam Motorcycle Club pioneer run to Brighton for rifles of historic interest. And they arrive all over the country, some under their own steam, some in lorries, and some towed behind motor cars. But however they come, their owners are united in desire to preserve and keep in running order these monument men who built them. Many are makes with names unknown today, but without whose early trials and experiments, the modern, highly efficient book could never have been developed. Machines like this 1902 Dreadnought, to be ridden appropriately, Eric Thompson, the vintage motorcycle club's president, got in the first run in 1930 and carried the same number, number one. In true vintage tradition, cared for every eventuality. The smallest machine. It's actually a Dursley Peterson bicycle. Gadget on the side is called a wall auto wheel. The micro used to call it something entirely different. But at least the ride is comfortable. This is it. Uh, uh. Oh, yes. Oh, I see. Water cool. Tricycle is the largest machine taking part. Built in Nigeria, it has an enormous twin cylinder engine of 1,100 cubic centimeters capacity and various other bits arranged between the rear wheels. Here's another three wheel Warwick, constructed 10 years after the Etna and with an engine size. It has various movements, such as easier. And the passengers sitting on the comfort front of the driver, thereby having a better view of any impediment. From three wheels to two, and this beautiful BSA, whose condition is a credit to its owner. And from two wheels to... No, I don't. Here's a preserved 1904 Humber. And next to it, a 1912 E&M. A good example of even patent, in which a unit replaces the front down tube of the frame. One of the oldest machines taken part, this 1899 proudly showing its medals, has a front brake, a guitar manufacturer's hard at work for many years to come. Another method of retarding forward is the external contracting brake. And of course, the bicycle type is favored by many. Methods of giving audible warning of approach are many, and they're from a simple <laughs> to a... There's a distinct variety of headgear on view too, including a couple of shoes. <laughs> but five lady riders entered favorously approved headgear. By now, more people have arrived and the crowd least. Drivers sign on. Spectators buy hot dogs. An intelligent interest in the machines. Belts. Socks pulled up and seats are taken. As zero hour approach, machines are started and warmed up. The Dreadnought makes its way to the start. The Secretary of the meeting, Len Wilson, talks to the Mayor of Epsom. Riders eagerly await the op. And for number one, here it is. A handshake from the mayor, and at 9.01 a.m., the 25th Pioneer run for Memphis. And later, and the second machine departs. The driver and passenger, or should it be on, their 19.3 quadrant four. Car. Mind my foot. And so every 30 a machine leaves for Brighton. 44 miles away. With 254 starters, there's quite a queue of waiting machines. And among 
this immaculate 1908 trial. And its writer, none other than Jimmy Simpson, that great pre-war TT writer. Next to him, another trial. 1970. Its owner, like Jimmy, from Paltero. Machines move up to the start. Machines leave the start. care not to leave their passengers behind. They may prove useful on the deeper hills or route to Brighton. After the start, they have like it road, and already the later but faster machines are in the slower, earlier numbers. Batten Bottom. At the top of Rygate Hill, the riders turn off a red hill and follow a route more suited to machines, not with modern brakes.
And some people had all. Oh dear, it's him again. You think we all tell him it's on the stand? Merton draws steadily nearer to their goal. And the sight of the bonds tells them that Brighton is not very far away. And Brighton welcomes them in two languages. English and, uh, uh, oh well. Oh, I don't think it's either of these that this chap is using. But joking, he did get going again and collected a first class award. Madeira Drive and the arrivals are all welcomed by the mayor of Brighton. In the first Sunbeam Club Pioneer run, 67 machines started and 56 reached Brighton. In the Silver Jubilee run, 254 machines start from Platinum Corner. 217 of these complete the journey within the time they're allowed and gain first awards. And only 12 retire. What better testimony to the roadworthiness and staying power of machines and competitors could there be? Some, it's true, push it, but they get there. Ah, glad to see your passenger turn up again, sir. And just she's needed most. But to us, it seems more appropriate to leave the finish and follow number one, the Betnaut, home. This magnificent old machine, veteran of the first run in 1930, symbolizes that it's behind all these old machines. The spirit that spent hours rebuilding, remaking, tuning, tinkering, and pushing, when necessary, these products yesterday and proves that there are still people amongst us who like to savor anew the joys of motoring as our father and grandfathers knew it. And now their days are these, and after the hustle and bustle of the run to Brighton, there remains the quiet ride home.